Hey there, it's Vicki Howell here to show you the skills that you need to know to do the jacquard stitch. This is a great stitch for melding together a couple of different yarns that you may not traditionally think work well together. For example, these two yarns, the Sweet Georgia DK Wash and uh, Superwash rather, and Woolen Woven Fibers Highland Wool Zebra DK. Normally, because they're completely different um, put ups and makeups, you maybe wouldn't put the, pin them together. But with a stitch like jacquard stitch, they are like peanut butter in my chocolate, chocolate in my peanut butter goodness. It creates a whole new fabric. So you can learn more about how to choose yarns for this stitch and my, my general tips at vickihowell.com. If you click on the blog, I have a whole post for that. But for now, I'm just going to show you how to do this stitch. I wanna show you really quickly though how different it can look just depending on the yarns that you use. All right, so. To work the jacquard stitch, you just need to know, other than the basic knit and purl, the only skills that you need for this are knowing how to slip stitches and how to carry long floats across both the front or across the front of the fabric while working both on the front and the back of the piece, and then also carrying yarn up the side as an optional um, as an optional technique. You could also cut your yarn, um, but I just don't enjoy the weaving in at the end, so I generally don't. All right, this stitch pattern is done in, um, in a repeat of 12 rows. I'm not gonna show you all 12 because the only thing that changes amongst those rows are that you scoot over a stitch at a time doing the same se sequence. And that's all written out, again, on my blog at vickihell.com. I've got a whole swatch written out for you to practice as well and then you can find patterns um, here's a pillow using it this is the cheers pillow and that is available at yarnier.com okay so we start with just um, one knit and one purl row i've already done that and that's with color a so for me that's with this color aquaversary color b the real teal is going to be joined after those two rows. So I'm just going to join in the usual manner, laying the yarn across. And we're going to start with, with B. We're going to knit two. These are our edge stitches. And I'm just going to give a little tug on those tails. And then from here, we are going to begin what will be our repeat across the row. Now, to work to card stitch, you want multiples of eight plus four. And again, I've written this out at vickihowell.com. All right, so we're gonna start, we knit two, and now we're going to slip four with the yarn in front. So that's um, SL4WYIF is, um, is the abbreviation. So I'm gonna bring the yarn forward, then I'll slip the next four stitches purl-wise. You always slip purlwise unless it's otherwise called for in the pattern so that the stitches do not twist. So I'm going to slip four. Then I'm going to move my yarn back. You want to make sure that you don't pull too tightly. You don't want it to scrunch. This isn't a smocking stitch. You just want that float to lay across those four stitches. And it's those floats, just a float over four stitches, that is creating what really makes this pattern, I think, unique. All right, so from there, we're going to knit four. And then we're going to slip four with the yarn in front, float it in front, bring it back, knit four. And then that'll bring us, and then you would just keep repeating that until you get to your last two stitches and you knit those two. Those are your edge stitches. Okay, so that's the front. Now what you can see here is that now your stitches are, are split up to where you see color A and color B. And what we're going to be doing in the next several rows is, subs is subsequently, subsequently? <laughs> subsequently, we will be, we will have fewer and fewer of color A until we don't have any at all. And so what that's doing is that's creating these slip stitches that will create what looks like a stockinette stitch little pattern, but in a diamond shape. It's super clever. Um, and I get so proud of our foremothers for coming up with stuff like this whenever I, I make a discovery like the jacquard stitch. Okay, so on our wrong side, 
we're going to work our two edge stitches. So for me, that's a knit one, purl one. Then we're going to purl three. We're purling three instead of purling four to match our knit four on the right side row because, as I, as I mentioned before, we're going to move one stitch over. Everything that we're doing, we're going to move over by one, and that's what's going to create that diagonal. So we'll purl three. Then we're going to take our yarn and we're going to move it in the back, so the opposite is as we did on the front side. And we're going to slip four, and this is where we resume our regular pattern. And then we're going to purl four. From here on out, the repeat would be purl four, slip four. It's, it's not written like that. It's actually purl three, slip four, purl one, but it is still multiples of four. So let's see, one, two, three, four. So what that did, what that with the yarn in back, so that would be W, Y, I, B, what that did was that created that same float um, that we had by keeping it in the front when we were working on the right side. But what you can see here is that it moved it over just a scotch because we started that, we started the, um, the whole repeat one stitch over. So you can see it literally just moves it. So from there, I'm do my repeat again, purl four, And then we end with our, I purled one too many. We end with a purl one, and then we end with our edge stitches, which on the wrong side row is a purl one, knit one. Okay, and then from here, we are just going to essentially lather, rinse, repeat all of those things um, for the next several rows. rows so that was three and four rows five through eight will, and I've, I've written it out against a, again at vickihell.com, are just repeats, but moving one over. And slowly you'll get fewer and fewer and fewer of these A colors. Um, and then when you work rows nine through 14, it's exactly the same thing in reverse. So that you have one portion worked in color B, where you're seeing these sort of sloped to the left floats. And then the next round, the next bit, the rows eight through through 14, or excuse me, nine through 14, will be in the alternate color, working in the opposite direction. But all you need to know are the skills that I just showed you. That's it. I did want to, I did want to mention one thing. Hold on my lost a stitch here. Well, we'll just ditch it, pretend it's not there. I do want to mention one thing. We talked about carrying our yarn up. So you could cut it because we are working, we're going to continue with A until we get through row eight. But what I like to do, and I only recommend doing this if you're working on a project that's going to be seamed, like a bag or a pillow. If you're working on a scarf, I wouldn't do this. You want to take your color A, every right side row, bring it up, and do a little a little twisty so that it carries the yarn up so you would still work with B but what you've done and you want to make sure that you give it a little tug what you've done is you've carried a up the side so that when you're ready on row 9 you will have it at the ready okay so because I didn't want to have a 30 minute long video, I'm not going to do all of the rows, but I did want you to see the skills that you need to know. And that is literally it. It is these, these floats worked either on the front of the fabric or always on the front, but from the front or from the back that create this really beautiful fabric. All right. Be sure to tag Vicky at Vicky Hell um, with your experiments. Dive into your stash um, or grab this yarn at yarnia.com. And uh, let me know when you um, work up a little jacquard swatch. Thanks.